showing you my mini haul for this quarter of the year. Um, I don't really plan my hauls. I sort of save up some money and then when I need some retail therapy, I go and buy myself some coloring book um, and coloring supplies. Um, lately, it's been a very busy season for us as a family and um, yeah, I needed some retail therapy. So I decided there were a few things that I wanted to buy for myself. So um, these are just a few of the things that I've bought. I'm just putting them here for you to have a little look at. Um, and then I will carry on um, with the video. So um, the first thing I needed to get was the um, set of water brushes by Derwent. My water brushes have been a bit um, clogged up and I haven't really, I think the bristles in some of my older ones have also kind of frayed a bit, even though I've slightly trimmed them. So I decided it's been three years, I should get myself a new set of water brushes. I asked around and I was told the Derwent uh, water brushes were quite good. My previous water brushes have been the Pentel water brushes, which um, I won't complain about the quality because it has lasted me a, a few years. I don't actually know how long these brushes are supposed to last. And um, they can still work. So I might pass them on to like my kids or use them when other people want to have a go and come over. Um, but yeah, these are my new ones. So I've got a fine tip, as you can see here. And then I've got a medium and a large. So that shows you the kind of bristles. I prefer the fine tip because I feel I have more control going into small grooves and crevices. Um, however, for open space backgrounds, I think this bigger brush would probably be a lot better than using a fine brush. Um, and I, I tend to swap between the water brushes and my paint brushes, depending on my mood. I quite like that with these water brushes, you can give it a squeeze and the water comes out. So there's a bit of control on the amount of water you use. Whereas with a paint brush, um, I have to be very aware of the water and dip my paintbrush into water to keep it activated and wet. So yeah, so those are my paint brushes and they come with a really nice lid. I like the lid, it keeps the, um, the tip secure. It feels nice and tight and the feel of this in my hand is also really nice. So yeah, I do like Derwent's products. I think they're um, great quality. I've never had really any complaints with their um, products. Right, so then I went and bought myself RJ Hampson Moonlight Mis Mischief. Now this is the hardback book. And as far as I'm aware, I think he's got three or so books in hardcover. And as far as I can tell, the paper is also um, a, a better quality than the rest of his books on the Create Space paper. Now, the Create Space paper does vary depending on where in the world it was um, printed. So I think that that's why some of the um, Amazon books work better with your pencils and your, and your media than others. So um, I stand to correction on that. Um, that is something new that I've learned and become aware of, but I would have to... Um, do a bit more research to confirm that. So this is the hardcover book. Um, slight, uh, I don't know if that happened in shipping. I think it might have happened in transport. So a little bit damaged there, but to be honest, um, by the way, I love my books and, and use them. Um, this won't bother me. They, they get worn out with time anyway. Um, so hardcover, there's the back, really, really beautiful. And um, you've got some beautiful shading going on here. You've got the ISBN number down there. Um, white on the inside. Um, this is just one set of pictures, whereas in his other books, the paperback formats, 
they come in two copies and I think often the second copy has some more black in the background um, I quite like that this doesn't so here we've got the this belongs to page and the title page then we have the publishing details um, with a little picture here I think almost all these books have this dude um, I've seen it in dragon the dragons book as well and then here it's a little write-up with the black background and pictures and then on this page is the name of the opposite page so here we have a beautiful dragon wrapped around a castle I love that there's a frame um, because then I feel like I, I don't have to cover the entire page. Um, I can just focus in this section so it just feels a bit more manageable. Um, I really like this picture. Um, I'm wondering if this guy is a fox because if it is a fox I find it quite amusing that you have the bunny stealing carrots from a fox yet... The carrot is the food for the bunny and the bunny is the food for the fox. <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure if it's a fox, but that's just the story my mind is making. Um, and then here we have the sleeping tree. So really, really beautiful. Um, the temple gate, this gives me the impression of an Eastern sort of architecture and inspiration there. Um, here we've got wild ride. I think this is the frog from the frog's tail. Um, Midnight Mayhem. And the paper is reasonably thick, so it's got a smooth feel to it. And I think it will take pencils really well. You could do a marker base and it will just bleed through over here. Um, you probably could do water-based markers, um, ink tents, watercolour pencils, watercolour paints. Although I wouldn't use too much water because I think this is thin enough it will still warp. Um, but because it's single-sided you could use any any media medium on it and it will, um, it should work. Um, I'd have to test it. And then here you've got the last mile. Larry visits the Oracle. Starcatcher. I do like this page. It's kind of thinking you could do like a pink into a purple, dark blue sort of gradient here and then have the moon glowing. Or you could paint the moon gold. It could look really nice. And because it's um, a very unrealistic um, style of artwork, it's very beautiful artwork, and it's very relaxed, it takes pressure off having to create it realistically. You could really let your imagination run wild. Um, this is one of my favorite pages. Um, I like the idea of doing a dark background around the glass but then inside the glass it's like daytime so yeah and the attention to details like in the cork is really really amazing and then you've got the tiger babysitting all the other animals then you've got the forest king so here it looks like a bit of a swamp so greenery here and then this looks like water so I would that's how I would probably color it but you could color the water any color you like really um, we have guardians jungle nights the observatory I like this one I'm not a hundred percent sure about this though not really sure what that is Then you got the Great Escape. Maybe they're watching TV. <laughs> it looks like a TV and having a cup of tea. Um, 
you got a year old hunt so this looks like a bit of a race i don't know what they're hunting but it looks like a race um, mom i'm hungry i really relate to this owl um, lately this is what i feel i look like <laughs> uh, very tolerant and tired and just weary <laughs> and my patience is being tested <laughs> uh, so yeah i want to color this page just because i can relate to it um then i like this page as well i think it's a really great forest um page also really great for autumn so then you've got the space walk something under the bed so a little take on mommy there's a monster in my cupboard there's a monster under my bed there's monsters everywhere so really you know touching into a child's nighttime fears there and then you've got the cellist i'm not sure what to do with this at the background and then i would probably change that to a sun um smuggler's island also very very beautiful um, sky pirate the sting in the tail <laughs> And then here you have the end and where to find more coloring and free downloadable pages, monthly coloring sheets, updates. At the back here is all these, um, these books that he's currently done. Um, my son has dragon dreams. So as far as I know, Lost and Found is a hardback as well. I don't think all of them are hardbacks, but I know Lost and Found is a hardback and then this book is a hardback. And then it's got some blank pages at the back here and then this page is the thickest piece of paper out of the entire book. And then here you've got like a little QR code there and the ISBN number. So that is Moonlight Mischief by RJ Hampson. Very, very beautiful. I'm really looking forward to testing this. And coloring in it um, and if I like how my pencils work I'm probably going to um, buy his books in the hardback format so this was very exciting for me and then next I have Alien Worlds by Kirby Rosans now um, as a family we have been watching Star Wars now we really do enjoy Star Wars together um, we, we're quite into fantasy as a family. I can do some sci-fi, depends on the sci-fi, but Star Wars has always been a bit of a classic uh, for me growing up and then also for our family. So we've been going and watching um, all the Star Wars series and catching up and in, enjoy, enjoying the story behind it. So I decided I was in the mood for um, colouring some space s space creatures and space inspired coloring books so um i did get kirby roseanne's alien worlds and um i also got it because i really do want to have a coloring book where um i can give myself permission to color my own color schemes um and it might sound funny that I want to give myself permission. It's just I I tend to color um, based on the book. I I find it difficult to sort of break out of my um, comfort zones per se or go too far out of my comfort zones. So um, by finding books that help me to step out of comfort zones is sort of my way of um, of pushing myself and trying different things so i wouldn't go and color all of my coloring books um in a very creative or um, maybe creative isn't the right word but in different color palettes like to go and color a, a a tiger in different colors other than what it is in nature would be very difficult for me and maybe i'll get to that one day but i'm not there yet so this kind of book the style where no there's no right wrong or right 
And I know there's no wrong or right in colouring, but in my mind, certain things are a certain way. So um, this is going to help me start working in in a different area of creative expression. Uh, anyway, long-winded um, ramble there. So front page, and we have a double page spread. Then all the information, a little bit about the book. I do like a bit of the black background because it just makes the page a bit more manageable. And then you've got all the names of the pages. I did pick up when I read at the back, the, the write-up at the back of the book. Um, there is a slight theme from here on. Um, so yeah, so then you've got this double page spread. And yes, it would be a lot of work, but I don't mind. Um, this is another very detailed double page spread. My husband's current um, Xbox game is also based in a space sort of theme. So um, I, I find I, if I get stuck, I can always go watch his game for a little bit and get a bit of inspiration. Um, so like I, I do like these two creatures I don't find them scary at all um, these to me remind me of those um, flowers that um, let off a rotten meat smell to attract flies and all of that to prey on so I'd probably draw inspiration from that um, then you've got this page I also quite like this one and yeah, I, I'm kind of envisioning like blue, uh, bright blues, bright reds, maybe white creatures, dark background or something. Um, I think, yeah, this is a double page spread. I also like this one. So I don't, I don't find this creature uh, menacing at all. There are some creatures that I, I do find a bit menacing. Um... My son pointed out that these were creatures. <laughs> I hadn't noticed until he pointed it out. So I don't know how much I'll color in this book. I'm not going to put myself under pressure to color in every single page. Um, but at least I've got something different. And yeah. Um, I like this one. I've seen this one colored in. Very beautiful. And then this guy it goes down this. But I, I don't know what these are. It's like some sort of whirlpool. Um, I'd probably stay away from red. But I, you know, maybe a green, greeny blue. I don't know. Um... You got this one here. It's like an underwater one. Reminds me of underwater. This guy reminds me of like a tapeworm. Um, I've got a book on micro creatures, and in there is a picture of a tapeworm. And then you get some other types of underwater sea creatures, and they actually do have mouths like this. I mean, it's really gross. So, you know, I find it really funny how. There are certain things in nature that are as creepy as this. <laughs> Maybe not with all the eyes, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> all right, then you've got some sort of space station. And then here there's like a lean to cyberpunk. I really like coloring galaxies, so um, these sort of pages um, I do find fascinating and I think would be a lot of fun because I could really pull up different pictures of nebulas and all of that and try and create that and then put paint these rocks and this planet in between. So, you know, I do like that and yeah, I'm, I mean, like, I'm not a fan of that part, but the rest I like. 
So, yeah, so some some pages are easier to color than others as you know with all things but what I really am going for is that um, opportunity to try different color combinations and yeah like this to me is like so um, I would color this like a sun and then these are solar flares be really cool to get a picture of the sun with a solar flare and see how I could copy it onto here and then creating that like um, light thruster so that the light stream and it doesn't have to be necessarily be yellow it could be like blue and or green and kind of like in Star Wars <laughs> so you can see my mind is very filled with Star Wars at the moment um, yeah again like a tapewormy weird ugly creature um, This sort of reminds me of like an eye, you know, the iris, the rest of the eye, but then it goes a bit too out and then I don't know what to do. <laughs> um. My son has, my one son's asked me to color this page and I asked him to pick a page, so I want to have a go at this one and um, draw inspiration from um, amber fossils and then here like a lot of practice with um, like a northern light effect even though this wouldn't be northern light so really try different colors and practice that gradient of going out and creating that um, that movement on the page and again like more nebulas or something like that and then here you've got that steampunk um, sphere which is kind of like a hub so then you've got a few pages linking up to that and I think this is inside it and then here you find you would find the gladiators and then the timekeeper um, and you've got like the the docking station and then this guy's in in charge of all these artifacts I've also seen this page colored in. It's really beautifully colored. I liked my colorful Country Lives version. She did a great job. And then this is the page on the cover. So yeah, and then at the back, you've got the little write up on each page which I really liked reading. Um, I found it very imaginative and, and fun. So yeah, I mean, is it my favorite book in the whole wide world? No, um, but I do want to try it and give it a go. And I probably will get Mythic World, um, even though, again, that's not a book I see myself necessarily coloring every page, but I do like some of them. So, yeah, that is Alien Worlds. I recently went and ordered myself a few more Neo Color 2s, and I placed an order on the Colored Pencil Shop, which um, supplies to the UK. And this is how they sent it to me. So, very well packaged in this corrugated um, cardboard with lots of tape. So that everything can be resealed and it's all well protected and laid out. I just take all the washi tapes. It's very good masking tape that they've used. And if you're in the UK, I really recommend the Coloured Pencil Shop. They just bring 
such great packaging nothing is ever broken everything comes as you've ordered it in the most beautiful way as you can see beautifully packaged well protected and i always try and make sure that when i answer when i'm expecting my order to arrive that i'm home so i can open the door and um, take it straight from the hands of the postman um, so these are the colors that I'm adding to my collection. I unfortunately did order a couple of duplicates, um, which I'm kicking myself for because I thought I had done a really good job at making sure I was not ordering duplicates. But anyways, I have got duplicates and that's okay. I'm sure they will get used. I really love my Neo 2s and I, ne I needed a few more yellows and a few more greens. So... Um, I'm really excited to have them and then I've got a couple more browns so yeah I'm, I'm planning on every couple of months or so buying more of the Neo Color 2s to grow my collection because I really do enjoy using them and then I'm just for now keeping them in their original packaging And these that way they stay safe and protected and I don't have to worry about it. And then I also went and got myself the um, Sakura Jelly Roll Metallic shiny pens because I've really enjoyed the Glitter Stardust pens. So I went and got the metallics as well. Uh, and that's just to allow myself to have some silver and gold and also a black um, pen nice sparkly one for um, jewelry or any embellishments that I need with a specific glittery um, black so um, yeah I'm really pleased to have gotten this and then I've also bought myself Creative Haven's Enchanting Fairy Tale Scenes by Marty Noble and I really love fairy tales and I enjoy reading them to my children I enjoy um, coloring them I've spent a lot of my life um, watching the Disney movies and reading up on different fairy tales from different uh, versions and renditions and I read to the boys Japanese folklore um, we've read African folklore we've read myth uh, Norse mythology Greek mythology um, I've read the tales uh, Brothers Grimm and I've also read 1001 Arabian Nights so I really do enjoy those um, stories so here there are a variety of beautiful pictures and then the name of the picture is up here in this corner which I just recently worked out um, all the pages are perforated so you can take them out, frame it or color it any way you like. It's single sided so you can use markers, water based medium, anything really. Um, so here we have Beauty and the Beast. This one is the Blue Beard. So I don't remember this story very well. I'd have to research it again. Um, but I am aware there is a fairy tale where there was a peacock and yeah, I need to go through and, and check out the stories again and make sure my, my stories are accurate. This one is Cinderella. So if I bring you in a bit more, she's at the ball. I quite like that it's a Cinderella at the ball and not Cinderella cleaning the house. Um, this one is East of the Sun and West of the Moon. So again, this is a fairy tale I would need to read up about. So I can't remember, remember that one. This one is The Emperor's New Clothes. So I think this one would be really, really fun. You know, terracotta buildings, lots of beautiful clothes, and then... Maybe you can put the peasants in more common clothes, like muted tones. This one is 
the Firebird and Princess Vasilisa. So this one I'd also need to read up a bit more on. This is from 1001 Arabian Nights and it is The Fisherman and His Wife. And the fisherman ended up going fishing, caught, found a magical fish and the magical fish gave him wishes because of his kindness. And when he told his wife, she got very greedy and demanded he go back to the fish and give him wealth. And then eventually the wife ends up becoming a god or a goddess. And um, this poor man <laughs> was so exasperated. And the fish ended up redoing, taking everything back away and restoring them back to what they originally had. And they lived happily ever after. So they learned their lesson. This is the princess and the frog, or the prince frog. So she kisses the frog, he turns into a prince. And then here we have Goldilocks, and she's having a good taste at the porridge. This one is the goose girl, so surrounded by her geese. Again, a fairy tale I'd have to read up a bit more on. This one is Hansel and Gretel. This is Jack and the Beanstalk. And here we've got hands coming down. So this could be the giant's hands. This is the match, the match girl. And this would be her grandmother. So she, nobody's buying her matches. She strikes the match to keep herself warm. And while she's doing that, she ends up seeing her grandmother and anyway it's a very sad ending because she does end up dying at the end but she goes to be with her grandmother so that one's a bit of a sadder fairy tale then this is the little mermaid here we have red riding hood this one is little tom thumb this one is the nightingale also a lovely, lovely story. The Princess and the Pea. But for the life of me, I cannot find the pea. So I'm not really sure what happened in this one. I'm hoping as I colour it in, I'll eventually find where the pea is. Um, because, you know, the pea was hidden underneath all these mattresses. Then we have Puss in Boots. Rapunzel. Rumpelstiltskin, one of my favorite fairy tales. This one here is Sleeping Beauty. Then we've got the Snow Queen. This one is Snow White and Rose Red. So I know about Snow White. I don't remember Rose Red. So again, something I'll have to... Um, research and then this one is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs then we have the Three Little Pigs then we've got Thumbelina which I always remember the Disney songs for and then this is the Twelve Dancing Princesses the Ugly Duckling. The Wild Swans. The, this was their sister and she had to make them clothes. And if she gave them clothes, I think they turned back into princes. And that's the end. So that is my Creative Havens Enchanting Fairy Tale Scenes by Marty Noble. The next book I bought in my mini colouring haul has been Mien Ray's Dirt Africa by Rita Berman. This is her newest book. I was very excited to get this book. I had a lot of expectations and I decided I didn't want to carry on looking at the flip throughs on, available on YouTube because I really wanted to enjoy this for myself. So I am not going to do a flip through on this video. However, I am going to link up here for you the flip through video of this book. 
along with my um, opinion on it. Um, I do have some of my opinion which may be a bit unpopular, um, but I will explain that in the flip through video. Thank you. The next book I'd like to show you is Jasmine Beckett Griffith's Mermaid's Coloring Book. Um, this was gifted to me by my husband for Christmas and I'm really, really grateful to him for um, getting this for me and just always supporting me in my hobby. Um, I just absolutely love how supportive he is. All right, so um, we've got an introduction from Jasmine and then as always there's the write-up and then the, the line art. And some of these are landscape, others are portrait. I really like this one. I think I really need to give this one a go. We have the Water Girls. Oh. I also think this one is very pretty. And the name means peace, calm, and tranquility. Then we have Absintha Mermaid. So she's got, she's got a herbal liqueur. Um, a little bit grim, I suppose, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Um, I quite like these ones because you really get to practice... Um, that underwater sort of effect so there's quite a few of that and here's dragonfly mermaid And then you've got the mermaid with the golden dragon. I would probably use the same colors as the dragon in the first book. And you have the crown of air and water. The abyssal mermaid. So here you can really play with photoluminance, which I think is really cool. I love foot um, bioluminance. It's very, very fun. Be fun to learn how to color it as well. And then pearl swirl mermaid. There's a mermaid with a baby alligator. Autumn mermaid. I've seen this one, the original is very, very beautiful. You have a sea storm. Uh, not my favorite. I'll probably do all the others before I do this one. As you can see, I had marked this one. Um, it's got a very limited color palette, lots of blues and blacks. Um, so it's French for flying fish. So it's the basically blue flying fish. And then we've got more in her series. And I think poissons is the French word for fish. I like that they framed. Um, it just really keeps the picture small and manageable. And then I don't have to worry about the whole page or if I use watercolor and ink tints, 
um, I don't have to worry about going out of the lines per se. Um, I'd love to do this one. I love lionfish. They are my favorite fish. Uh, mermaid mother and child. Then we have big, big blue whale. And I think she said um, it was a really big painting she did. So she shrunk the size of her painting into a small page. <laughs> And then you've got Manta Ray Mermaid. You can have a lot of play with the, um, the glass jars. And sea Turtle Mermaid, again, also quite small, so it feels quite manageable. This one's a sea chariot, so the fish are the, pulling the chariot. Um, just mermaid triplets. This one's called Nixie. This one, I like the shells, but it, <laughs> this is a bit odd. So, yeah. We'll do the pages we like first. Here you've got these girls collecting seashells. Again, you could play with glass. This has got to do with orcas. Shipwreck siren, so she's the siren that sings and traps the shipwrecks the ships. And here you've got sort of like an angel or fairy type thing going on, and then some ancient writing on the shell. This is a bit of a um Renaissance kind of take. And then here you've got like these bookmark type things going on here. And then she has her Halloween book. The coloring book as well and I think she also has an Alice in Wonderland book and then here's the QR code to use to get to see the original pictures uh, which is what I use and then I try and color the pictures based on the original paintings just to help me um, so yeah so that is Jasmine Beckett Griffith's mermaids coloring book and it was a lovely Christmas gift from my husband then next I have Paul Brune's Amazon and this was also a gift for Christmas from my husband who really really treated me. I've heard the paper in this book is amazing. So we have a little practice section here And again, a little bit here. And then all of this is, I think, in French. So you could always use uh, Google Translate if you don't know French. Um, and then here we have the beautiful pictures. It's just a stunning arrangement of um, nature, really. Very well thought through the colors I mean, if you go and look up each creature and the um, flowers you can really create such beautiful beautiful pictures the colors work together 
and I don't think you'd have to really worry about realism per se because the line work is really really good so she shows you um, where she gives you the texture is what I'm trying to say So very, very beautiful, beautiful pictures. Lots of greens, lots of blues. I think that's a harpy eagle. Very, very beautiful. I find her work has also got um, a lot of meaning behind it. So the reason that you can see through the um, jaguar has to do, I think, with some of the loss of habitat. Um, there is a reason for it, and it's not because she's trying to make it weird. Um, I, I remember looking through some of the write-up at the back and realizing it was had to do with um, habitat and deforestation or poaching type thing so she's bringing awareness as well uh, I do stand to correction but that's how I understood it These fish are really cool. They shoot jets of water at their prey, and that's how they catch their food. And the paper feels quite thick as well, so it's also got quite a smooth texture to it. We've got loads of fish and birds and flowers and leaves, so you really just take your time with it and really enjoy it. And then here on each side you can go and look up the Latin names because um, in nature scientists what they've done is they've used Latin to name all the species and what's so clever about that is it doesn't matter what language you you speak uh, or what your native tongue is um, the it stays the same so the latter name is the same regardless of, of what language you speak or are familiar with. You type it up, you'll still get to the right, um, the right animal. And then here you've got the copyright and the publishing information and that is the end. So that is my um, Christmas presents. And concludes the end of my haul video for 2023. So thank you everyone for looking at my haul video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been collecting and getting up to in the last quarter of 2023. And let me know if you have any uh, pages you would like to see colored during a live stream or as a color along. I will uh, jot them down, stick them in my um, coloring journal and get onto them as soon as possible. Um, it does take me time to complete the coloring videos and to get them edited, but um, I do appreciate your patience with me and I will definitely 
uh, write down your requests and get to it as soon as I can. So thank you so much for joining me and if you have enjoyed this video please do like, subscribe and comment below. I always love to hear from you. It does keep me going and encourages me to um, further the channel and I will see you in the next video. Until next time everyone, take care. Bye for now.